In these uncertain economic times, it's easy to be worried about protecting your wealth, your hard-earned savings, and your family's financial future. Plunging interest rates, the devaluating dollar, and political unrest constantly threaten what you have worked hard to earn and all that you own. That's why now it's more important than ever to protect your assets and have the money you need to make your dreams come true. Welcome to the Global Wealth Fortress Report with successful global entrepreneur and wealth preservation expert, Joel Nagel. Joel's helped thousands of people just like you protect what you have so that you can make even more and make your every dream come true. So sit back and enjoy Joel Nagel's offshore expert advice on how you can live the good life at a great price, where the sun never sets on your financial fortress. Hello, 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 and welcome to Joel Nagel's Global Wealth Fortress Report. Um, today, we are going to be very, very topical because we're going to talk to America's number one asset protection attorney about the so-called, and I say so-called because the title's absurd, inflation. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Inflation Reduction Act. Joel, what do you think about that? The, inflation, the Inflationary Inflation Reduction Act. What do you think? Well, um, yeah, thanks for thanks for doing the show with me today. Carter, it's great to be here. And uh, welcome back, by the way. I know you. Thank you. Have, Thank have you. A vacation. Um, coming to you today from, from Belize. You can see the nice tropical painting here behind me. And... Uh, at the, the headquarters of uh, Key Bank in, in San Pedro um, and, you know, obviously dealing with a lot of issues for clients and, and what have you while I'm here. Uh, but yes, I mean, it's it's all over the news. Uh, I don't think there's any place in the world that you can escape uh, from, you know, what's happening in the U.S., whether it's, you know, Pelosi flying over to Taiwan or, you know, the FBI raiding the former President Trump's house or, you know, this Inflation Reduction Act, it's its absolutely, it's passed by people that have no understanding of economics. And I mean, no understanding of economics, <laughs> because, you know, that's like giving a guy who's 10 feet down in the in the ground, giving him a shovel and say, keep digging, you'll dig your way out. You know, I mean, it's, it's the, there, there's no way that uh, the government can uh, tax and spend more. And, um, and that's going to rein in inflation. It's just, I mean, it, the best argument for it is to say that because the government is so much less efficient than the private sector, that they can tax you and take money out of circulation and they'll spend it less well than you in the private sector. And, and that's how somehow it's going to rein in inflation. But no, I think every um, economist who's looked at this right, left, independent, doesn't matter. Um, you just cannot spend your way out of inflation. Inflation. Yeah. So there, there's really only there's only a couple ways that you could uh, get rid of inflation. Paul Vol Volcker did it, you know, under Ronald Reagan. Uh, you have to massively in, uh, hike up interest rates until you know you 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 have to have the interest rates higher than inflation. Yes. Right? So if inflation yes. and and you know we get all these statistics that we know aren't even true. So if the if the official statistics say that. Um, Inflation's at nine percent. You would have to have a ten or eleven percent, uh, inter, you know, interest rate to rein that inflation in. Um, but we know that that's not really true. And the the real inflation is, you know, I I, I know you like to quote the shadow statistics, yeah, um, and they're yep. probably much more accurate. Uh, but I think they're showing around twenty percent. That's um, right. That's it, John Williams. And can you imagine if? interest rate rates went to 20% or 22, 23% tomorrow. That's, that's where they'd have to go to stop inflation. Um, yeah. You know, Ronald Reagan said that uh, it, it, inflation is a sign that the government is living too well, not that people are living too well, but that the government is living too well. And, and so his um, reaction would have been to cut government spending, cut taxes, give more money back to you know individuals, let them spend it. Um, but we have a government now that's doing exactly the opposite. So it, it's a total sham. And, you know, in my view, people say, well, you know, the tax 
You know, President Biden said it wouldn't affect anybody under four hundred thousand dollars. That's <laughs> garbage. The the, ta the the tax rates on corporations, um, you know, they filter their way through the economy. Yeah. Um, they they do. I I can remember when um, when Hillary Clinton was running for president. Uh, this was you know a number of years ago, and she was saying we needed to penalize the big oil companies and we needed to put a big tax on the oil companies uh, because they're these big bad greedy companies. Right. I was riding. I was driving to a baseball tournament on the Ohio Turnpike with my ten year old who was listening to her very astutely. And when when she finished, he turned to me and said, "But Dad, if they increase taxes on the companies." Won't the companies just increase their prices to the to the customer? And you know, I mean, it's so simple. Even a caveman can do it, right? It's so simple. A year old exactly can understand that. And uh, the uh, Congressional Budget Office says it's the equivalent of about a one and a half percent tax increase on everyone. 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 If you everyone. make five dollars, you're paying more in tax. So, you know, and then to me, and I think what a lot of people are going to be late to figure out. The, the biggest travesty of all is this, you know, they just people they throw around numbers that are so large that people glaze over and don't even understand what they mean. There's an $80 billion increase uh, in funding for the IRS. The IRS billion for the IRS. 87,000 new yes, IRS agents. Exactly. 87,000. And to put that in perspective, it will be larger than four or five of the largest government agencies combined. combined. So you're talking FBI, Customs and Border P Patrol, you know, immigration, um, you know, boom, boom, boom. You, you take all these big uh, agencies, add them up, it'll be less than that. And one analyst, I think, got it exactly right. He said, it'll be, you'll find out, particularly if you're a business person, every single person will constantly be in an audit. And I don't know about you. I've been in a few audits in my lifetime. Fortunately, knock on wood, I've won every single audit. I've never paid the government one penny more than 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 I had declared and paid already. Excellent. So Excellent. Other, other than you know paying legal fees and and extra accounting fees and things like that, I've never paid the government an extra cent. But it's it's a harrowing experience. Your life's under a microscope. Even if you've done nothing wrong, you know you you're you you're very defensive, right? And and it's a police state. It's a terrible, terrible police state. And uh, horrible. when horrible. every single American wakes up and realizes that they're constantly under an IRS audit, uh, that is not going to go over well. So that, to me, it's not only about economics, it's about freedom. I mean, who, who, it's just, who, who wants that? And who comes up with those ideas, right? I mean, it's well, just- 87,000, 87,000 new IRS agents going over every penny we make. And you know, in, under Biden's in March, in March, Biden signed, let me look, I got it right here, Executive Order 14067, Section 4 allows the IRS and everyone else to delve into your bank account more deeply than ever. I mean, that's yeah. according to Jim Records. So now we know what these 87,000 are going to be doing. Yeah, Except exactly. the middle class. We, we, we actually have something called the Bank Secrecy Act you know, it, you know what it actually says? It's literally the world of the Mad Hatter. It says that the bank has to pass your information to the government and keep the disclosure of your information to the government secret from you. That's what the Bank Secrecy Act in the U.S. says. Whereas, you know, in a place like Belize, bank secrecy means, hey, the bank provides information to you and, and only you. Now, there's some exceptions to that. Um, you know, under FATCA, uh, in certain circumstances, they have to provide information about your accounts to the IRS as well. Um, but, you know, the, the number of people who can get out your information, uh, you know, it's not ex-spouses, ex-partners, ex, ex this, ex that, or anybody who decides they have a, a lawsuit against you can go on a fishing expedition. Uh, but I, I kid you not, um, you know, this is going to be a real travesty. And, you uh, you know, if, if President Trump wants to get back in office, I think he only has to make one promise, abolish the IRS. I think if, oh. if he says abolish the IRS, because within the next two years, people will already feel this. This is going to have an immediate effect. You know, they're going to hire people by this fall. People are going to be getting audit notices right and left and right and left. And it's not just going to be the wealthy. It's going to be everybody. And, um, you know, it's it's a 
not the kind of um, big brother society I think most Americans want to live in. So, you know, the when things like this happen, the, our phones, they just they just ring all day. We talk wow. to people all day. At the end of the day, there's 50 messages in my voicemail, 300 emails, and they're all basically saying the same thing. They're saying, hey, I, 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 what's happening to freedom? I, I want more freedom. So they're looking for ways, if they can minimize their tax, which is getting harder and harder, they're looking for that. They're looking for their plan B to, to live somewhere else, to get a second passport, to maybe diversify away from fiat currency like the dollar, which you know can just be printed um, uh, you know, nonstop. So that's that's what people are worried about. They're worried about their family. They're worried about their kids. You know, the kind of society that they're growing up in. And uh, I feel badly. I mean, for business, it's great, but you just see and feel so much strain and stress and anxiety and worry um, from everybody. And it's just, it's just it, doesn't have, it doesn't have to be like that. I don't. I you know, Joe, the personal toll is absolutely astonishing on people knowing that. They are taxed to death now at every level, local, state, and federal, taxed to death, constantly going up. And now you get this. That I just earlier I held up this great analysis by that that goes right to what you were saying by Fox News. I mean, that is just you know, Elizabeth Warren and Biden and all of them said, well, it's only gonna hit the one percent. Uh, that ain't what this says, folks. I mean, 90 61 percent. Of those earning between forty to fifty thousand dollars a year, are going to see a tax increase. That's horrifying. That's horrifying. Yeah. A quarter well, of those earn, earning only ten thousand dollars a year are going to see a tax yeah. increase. It's not the one the, percent. Yeah, and then of course, inflation's on top of all that, and inflation yeah. is a is a stealth tax. When you think about it, I mean, your money's the costs are going up. Your money's not. That's a that's a tax. You know, when when middle class and poor people can't afford to buy their medication and their food, they can't afford to go to their kids baseball game because they can't buy gasoline and put it in their car. I mean, those are stealth taxes. And <clears throat> honestly, it's it's uh, it's because the rank and file politician on both sides. But, you know, we're going to really uh, focus in on the Democrats right now because they're calling the shots. They have the president, the, shots. You know, the Senate, the House. They really don't understand economics. And every time they try to do something to make the, it better, it's only going to make it worse. And all so, they do is pack all this pork. I mean, there's so much pork in that bill. Uh, right. The vast majority of the money is going for things that that they're not even talking about. That, in my view, should be just flat out illegal. You know, if you want to pass a bill, pass a bill. Should be two pages. Everybody should be able to read it. What's the goal? What are you trying to do? And but you can't you know, do these thousand and 2000 page bills. And then you've got hundreds of pages of pork just, just buried into them. That's, that's what's happening. I, I would guarantee you that the vast majority of the people who are voting for it and probably also the people voting against it really have no clue what's even in it. You know, no I mean, clue what's they don't read it. They don't read it. Remember what Nancy Pelosi said exactly. with Obama's health care bill. First, Let's we have pass to pass it. it. Yeah. So we can find out what's in it. it well, hey, you yeah. talked about the, the where the money is going, $80 billion is going to tax relief for those who buy a electric car costing a hundred thousand dollars or more. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, how many that ain't people, folks like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, they had the, um, the, the uh, secretary of transportation, uh, th this is making its way around on uh, YouTube. Um, and one of the, uh, congressman was asking him about this pledge to, you know, have all cars between 2030 and 2035 uh, be electric. And uh, the, the fellow was, you know, very knowledgeable, the congressman, he was asking the secretary all these questions, excuse me, about does he really know and understand how much uh, electricity a an electric car uses? And he clearly didn't, but he showed him the facts and the statistics. And it was about uh, one car charging overnight uh, would be about the equivalent of four air conditioners running nonstop. And he was talking about the fact that in states like Texas, you know, their grid is absolutely at the at the brink right now, particularly with the, you know, the heat going on this summer. And he just asked them straight out, well, you know, they, they, they added it all up, all the cars in America, they're all electric. 
you know, it was like a thousand times more power than our than our grid can even hold. And the, you know, the Secretary of Transportation, um, you know, he he reluctantly acknowledged that the fellow was right. So, you know, when when Biden stands up up and makes these pronouncements, uh, it's just it's hogwash. I mean, it's not going to happen. I mean, if that were really going to happen, they'd be needing to con be constructing, you know, a vast new power grid starting today to even have a hope to, you know, be ready in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years and they're not doing it. So, you know, it's, it, it, and it's just one more thing that's driving up the cost of, of everything. Exactly. And, and they, they don't seem to, to, to grasp the fact that you're going to need coal burning plants to generate the electricity to supply to the electric cars. I mean, there's there's never any end to it, Joel. There's never yeah. an end, and, and there's never any end to what you said earlier, and that's making the American people pay for it. I just got a call from a friend in Florida who his his, his monthly rent was about $1,000, and he was just told from now on it's going to be $400 more. Yeah, That's what's being done. And now they're going to inflate the currency with a $700 billion phony inflation reduction act it yeah it's, it's, it, it's discouraging i mean it 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 really is making people of all stripes you know consider rapidly where they want to be where, where they can afford to be you know i mean i get clients that come to me that have literally all the money in the world they could go anywhere uh, but also i'm seeing more and more clients in that middle class sector that are you know they feel like they just can't afford any kind of retirement, any kind of quality of life yeah. in the United yeah. States. And that leads them to look at places like Latin America, where the dollar is going is very strong. Southeast Asia, you have different places in the world. And, and some of them want to go because they have an adventuresome spirit. And for those people, you know, I commend them. Great. Go do it. I, I've lived that way in my life. I, I, I love experiencing new cultures. But I get people that just call me and say, I have to go. I can't. I can't afford to stay. You I know, can't afford I to stay. I have a little pension. I have a little social security and I'm worried that, you know, I'm going to run out of money and, you know, I'm going to be in, in, in some, you know, public housing, uh, a public assistance for the rest of my life. They're, they're petrified about that. So, um, you know, for those people, your heart really goes out to them because, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. And, and the, a lot of this is self-inflicted wounds. It really is. We, there's so many ways that could bring uh, the, the, the cost down, you know, without uh, saying that they're going to do it by raising taxes. And no. And if they, if they make a move to somewhere like, let's say Nicaragua, Honduras, even Belize, their cost of living is going to drop by at least two thirds maybe three quarters and Honduras three quarters and the same with Nicaragua. Well, that's a tremendous savings for people. They can, if you bring in 2000 a month, you and I've said this before in these countries in central and even South America, you can live essentially like royalty, essentially yeah. like royalty. That's true. That's I mean, it is. You know, I, yeah. I have a friend here in Belize who's uh, in the pharmaceutical business. And he said, you know, when the cruise ships come in, People can buy a lot of the drugs here that they don't need prescriptions for, um, and they can buy the generic um, equivalents. And he said they come in and they fill up shopping bags with, you know, he said there's about 10 major drugs that almost every elderly person, uh, you know, that's the universe of, of things that they want to buy because it's, you know, it's like you say, it's 75 percent, 80, 90 percent cheaper, um, and they're buying them because they know that they'd rather, you know, pay for them here than, than go back to wherever they're from in the States. But, but that's just one example. Food, I mean, we, we do have some food inflation here in, uh, in Belize because obviously transportation, fuel costs, some of those things are, are affected at, at the global level. But for the most part, the, you know, the, the relationship uh, of, of the cost of living has not gone up nearly as much as it has in the no. States. You know, if you're if you're down here getting a, a two thousand dollar a month uh, Social Security or pension, or if you get twenty five hundred or three thousand, you're really really living in a almost a luxurious lifestyle. I mean, right. You could afford to have you could afford to have domestic help. You know, somebody to clean your house. If you wanted to have a cook, you could have a cook gardener. You know, we see that in Nicaragua even more so because the cost of of labor is so so low. Um, and um, 
yeah, I mean, it's for people who want it, great. And I, and we, we want to help you. We want to help people who are going reluctantly as well. But, you know, I feel badly for them. They feel like they have no choice. You know, they no, I, have- I just, yeah, I just got a note from actually a, a, a lady I know who lives not far from me in Pennsylvania, four children. They have four children. And she said, I watch you all the time. And I really want to sit down and talk about how we make the move. We can't afford to live for anymore. How we can make the move to one of the countries you talk about in Central America. I mean, that's where people are today, Joel. It's yeah. where they are. And this, this is a middle, middle, middle income family. Can't afford yeah, to live there anymore. I, I talked to a, an elderly couple here in, in, in San Pedro, Belize uh, yesterday. And they told me that, uh, again, with the cost of living being so much lower, you know, they can take three, four trips a year back to the States to visit their kids and grandkids and they still come way out, way ahead you know they 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 still have way more money than if they were trying to live in the state so yeah. you know my practice deals with a lot of wealthy people um, but i think you know and, and i'm always happy to help talk about ways that they can diversify their their funds and protect their assets through legal structures uh, but i think it's almost a it's almost a national emergency what's happening and affects so many people that uh, you know our our comments and advice are really geared towards everyone, which is uh, if we if we can help you find a way to, to have a better life for less. I know that's your slogan, a yes, better life is. for less. Uh, we're happy to do that. And and that is really a form of, of asset protection and wealth preservation because you have more money, you can spend it on other things or you can save and invest. And uh, that that's what this couple yesterday was telling me. They're able to travel, uh, but they're also able to invest a good bit more. And they feel good about that because what if prices keep going up? You know, if prices keep going up, they want to make sure that that they have the the resources to kind of stay ahead of that. So uh, I applaud them for you know moving to a place like Belize. They love it here. They enjoy the lifestyle here. They have a better quality of life. They can invest more. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're not worried about if they're going to end up in you know some uh, public uh, uh, assistance housing or something like that. They're going to have a very comfortable lifestyle here. If they need to access medical care, it's very reasonable here, again, compared to the states. So, you know, they feel very comfortable and confident about the future. It's just fantastic. I, you know, we're, we're out of time here, but I, but you, you mentioned medical. And I remember I, told, I interviewed a friend of ours about a year ago who had had a CAT scan and a bunch of other procedures for kidney stones, right, in Nicaragua. And he said the bill was $58 total. Well, I just had a CAT scan the day before yesterday, and I have I'm on Social Security and supplemental, and they stuck and they the woman said, okay, your co- your payment is two hundred fifty dollars. I said, excuse me, she said, yeah, your part two hundred fifty dollars. So my payment when I'm supposed to be on uh, my bills paid by Social Security was five times what it is in Nicaragua for the whole thing. So. You know, come on, folks, it's time. Go to the good life and great price. I, I mean, just, you know, recently, uh, actually, today's my birthday. So I'll uh, hey, share that. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, it's, great, it's great to be with you for my birthday. But the reason I'm telling you that is I had an executive physical and uh, just the other day, and uh, it was almost a whole day of procedures. I mean, they did the cardio, you know, the scans, the everything from top to bottom. And, uh, my bill at the end of the day was 185 Belize dollars. So that's about dollars. <laughs> and, you know, I saw a half dozen doctors. They took, you know, oodle, they, they did oodles and oodles of tests. Um, you know, I did stress tests and and all the all that kind of stuff. And uh, in Belize, you, this is yeah, in Belize, Belize, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, uh, you know, I didn't have insurance or anything here. I do have it in the States, but um, you know, I didn't even bother with it because, you know, the bill was under under a hundred dollars and uh not only that they they treated me the whole day with uh extreme courtesy and kindness and i had a nurse who literally took me from station to station to station i never waited in lines as soon as i finished one there was somebody waiting to take me to the next uh, station and and that's really the kind of (laughs) lifestyle that you can have so you know i for me it wasn't a, a big expense and i think you know most people would probably get a test like that and who knows a test like that might detect something early and help save your life. So yeah, you can't put a, you can't put a price on that. Can you? It's fantastic. 
Well, I think we now have convinced people it's time to join you in Belize, Joel. Mm-hmm. And if they hurry up, they can celebrate <laughs> your birthday. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Uh, Carter, it was great to be with you. Sorry we didn't get around to the mailbag. Uh, I don't know if we should do a better job of carving out time at the end or just do a whole show on uh, on questions. We'll do it in the future. Thank you very much. This has been Good great. Be this has been Thanks. fantastic. Just what we needed to hear. There you go, folks. The good life at a great price in the sun, sand, and surf. Uh, it's time for you to live well. Make your move. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>